Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be fixing the Elden Ring Best Arcane Bleed build by Don Drone Table. At this point you might notice a theme that there's been a lot of bleed builds. And that's because they're generally the most clickbaity builds out there. And really I want to stop the spread of misinformation which is primarily centered around clickbait builds. We are going to be dual wielding Beastman's Curved Swords. And the two main reasons we've opted to use these over the scavengers curved blades are firstly and most obviously you can only legitimately get one of the scavengers curved swords per playthrough so really you can't pull off that full build until you are quite a way into new game plus whereas this build we can fully utilize in base new game and the second reason is that the full build will actually produce more damage output than the scavengers curved sword because we are going to be specking into strength scaling rather than dexterity and the strength scaling on the beastman's curved sword will yield more attack rating than the dexterity scaling on the scavengers curved sword i have no idea where he got his numbers from but they are not correct as you can see scavengers curved sword has more bleed and also has a higher dps now for the DPS chart specifically, we are not calculating auxiliary effects like bleed, we are just calculating the pure damage. So even if scavengers had less bleed, it would still be doing more DPS. However, they have more bleed and are doing more DPS, which makes them the better choice if you have the ability to get them. These are both with the same stats invested, so I don't really understand how he thinks beastmen's are better. A simple AR look in the menu would tell you that scavengers are better, but hey, whatever. I guess that's pretty hard for people. Main stat you're aiming for is 62 in strength because this is going to be the hard cap for the Beastman Curve Swords. Next up, you want to aim for 45 in Arcane, but as you approach level 150, you can start to increase that. Of course, it's very important to put a lot of points in Vigor so that you're more survivable. Ideally, 40 minimum and probably 50 maximum. Then you can put just a couple of points into Mind and Endurance so that you can summon decently powerful Spirit Ashes and you have enough equip load to wear the armor set that we'll be talking about later. And okay, so first he recommends 62 strength. I don't really know why he thinks that's the hard cap. The hard cap is... 99 or 148 if you're two-handing so let's just assume he said soft cap it's not a soft cap either the soft cap for strength 60 is the second one and 80 is the final soft cap so 62 isn't really relevant it's not a relevant point to stop at so i don't really understand what he's saying there uh, second he says minimum of 45 arcane that's the maximum you should go then he recommends a 40 vigor minimum and 50 vigor maximum again it doesn't really make a lot of sense i mean 40 vigor is the first vigor soft cap so sure whatever 50 vigor isn't really a relevant place to stop either it's just there uh, 60 vigor is the so final soft cap so stop at 60 if you're loving vigor because there's no point in stopping earlier ashes of war to apply to your beastman's curved sword both of them want to have blood affinity and when maxed at plus 25 that will give both of them 114 blood loss buildup which is far more than a maxed out occult scavenger's curve sword and as i say with putting these in blood affinity over putting the scavenger sword in occult we also have a higher attack power so they have more attack and more blood loss buildup than the scavenger's curve sword now for the ashes of war themselves obviously you can only get one seppuku per playthrough so one of them wants to have seppuku and the other one bloody slash now a lot of people overlook bloody slash okay so again this isn't accurate scavengers have more bleed assuming you're using seppuku which he is and more ar and damage and dps so i don't understand where he's coming from a simple look in the menu should tell you this but maybe he didn't use seppuku and looked and then bloody slash Bloody Slash is fine. It's not really relevant in any particular capacity. Especially since you can, in fact, get Seppuku twice in New Game, assuming you use a Lost Ash of War. So, it's there if you want to use it, but not recommended. 
Vare, which you will be awarded near the end of Vare's questline once you defeat all three of the Nameless White Masks. And this will raise your attack power when there is blood loss nearby, and there is always going to be blood loss nearby. Pair this with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which does the exact same thing. You are now dealing devastating amounts of damage every time anything triggers blood loss. That includes when you use Seppuku on yourself. And the Lord of Blood's Exaltation is dropped by Eskar, Priest of Blood, at the bottom of the Langdale Catacombs. Next up, we've got the Raptor's Black Feathers, which will strengthen jump attacks. And as I say, when we come onto the move sets in just a second, you will be using jump attacks a lot. I will explain why once we finish talking about the gear. And the Raptor's Black Feathers are found in the Sage's Cave in a chest behind an illusionary wall. And speaking of jumping attacks, we will be pairing this with the Claw Talisman to make jumping attacks deal even more damage. And that is found here in Stormvale Castle on a corpse situated atop a watchtower. Next up, you just want to equip the strongest greaves and gloves that you can, and ideally get your poise at 52 or more. 52 is a very key number for low to medium equip load builds, because this is the first point where you will start to notice a considerable reduction in the amount of times you are staggered by enemies' attacks. Finally, we are going to be using the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia Talisman because these two weapons attack very, very fast and lots and lots. And every single attack is going to continually raise our attack power. So as we armor is unoptimized, if you're using White Mask and Raptor's Black Feathers, please use Tree Symbol, Gauntlets and Greaves. That's the lightest armor you can use while maintaining 51 poise. 52 is not the poise break point for PvE. 50... 0 0.01 is and the reason for that is because enemies do five poise damage the menu shows pvp poise which is 10 times what pve poise is so enemies are doing five poise damage as long as you have five or more poise doesn't matter the decimal rounding you will not get staggered however since the armor menu displays pvp poise you need 50 point whatever to not be staggered so tree sentinels got lots of greaves that'll give you 50.99 or whatever the number is for talismans dragon crest great shield isn't really needed especially when you can use millicent's prosthesis and for rotten wing sword insignia use winged sword insignia if you are only focusing on the pve aspect of new game as for the rest uh claw and lord of blood station pretty standard for bleed builds. For my improved build, we have six to vigor, because that's the vigor soft cap. We have base mind, base endurance, base strength, 47 dexterity, that's working towards the 60 dexterity soft cap, base intelligence and faith, and then 80 arcane, because that's the arcane soft cap. We're using Reduvia, and only Reduvia, because there's no other weapon that comes close to its DPS, assuming you're locked to just new game and you aren't going to trade with other players, which is totally a legitimate thing. Not sure why he claimed it wasn't kind of weird, but maybe you play offline or something. I don't know. We have the white mask, fingerprint armor, battle mage gauntlets, and crucible greaves. That's going to give us 50.99 poise. For talismans, we have shard of Alexander, Millicent's prosthesis, wing sword insignia, and Lord of Blood's exaltation. These are all able to be gotten in new game. For the Great Rune, we have Rodan's Great Rune, because that is generally the best PvE Great Rune. For the Crystal Tier, we have Opline Hard Tier and Thorny Crack Tier to boost our consecutive attack damage and damage negation. We can fit another Power Stance Dagger in here if we wanted to, something like the Great Knife. However, it's not necessary when you just have the Ashwar or Duvia 